Hi there, Dan from onlinebasscourses.com. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to take you through some musical situations that you can use modes in. And I think a lot of people are confused by modes and what they are and actually how to use them. So I want to just clear up that, demystify them a little bit today for you, and also give you a few backing tracks that you can use and chord charts that you can follow along. So you can download all those at onlinebasscourses.com. I'll put a link below. So if you look at the chart, you've got the seven modes, and then you've got the seven different arpeggios that come from those modes. And in the examples that I'm going to show you, I'm going to be using that a lot. So it's really important that you know that. The Roman numerals refer to the number of the chord. And this is, I think for us bass players, this is the really important point. We'll, we'll do this now. We'll move on to example one. So example one is going from the four to the five chords. So that's that F to the G. You can see the underlying modes there. You've got the Lydian and the Mixolydian. So F to G in this key is, is the 4 to the 5 chord, and you've got your Lydian over the 4 chord and your mixed Lydian over the 5 chord. So F Lydian. Just F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. And G to G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's why C major is quite a good key to teach because I don't have to talk about any sharps or flats. C major's got no sharps or flats. So those are your notes. Those are your your, your F Lydian and your G Mix Lydian. Now, just because you know the notes underlying the chord, it doesn't mean that you have to play all of them all at once. You really don't. As a bass player, you can just play the roots. And that, a lot of the time, is, is your job, and that's great, and that's kind of nice and easy to do, but what you might want to do is embellish it. And all I was doing there was just to fill using over that G. I was just using all the notes of the G mix Lydian. I really have that under my fingers. I know the sound of it and I know the shape of it. It's a really, really important concept on the bass. It's anything you play, because it's such a shape orientated instrument, it's a really good idea to get your shape and connect up the, the, the different patterns that you have on the bass with the sound. So. So you can hear a line in your head and you can just play it. Eventually, it will take time to do that. So, you know, go slowly with this. Make sure you've got the basics down as you go. Now, the sharp four, if I'm on an F, first fret, E string, the sharp four is one fret higher and on the next string. And that gives it its Lydian quality. And you can make up a lot of melodic kind of ideas using this. Don't forget you can download those backing tracks. So just whack that backing track on and, and play around with the different ideas that you can have for this. Let's move on. Next one, we've got a two to five chord progression. A classic example of that is Good Times by Chic. But this backing track is a bit more of a sort of Pink Floyd vibe going on. I've got two of the two bars of the two chord, that's D minor seven, going to two bars of the five chord, that's G seven. So, in this little progression here, the two chord I can play the Dorian mode over, and the five chord I can play the Mixolydian mode over. I'll just show you how that sounds now. So over the two chords, you've got D Dorian. That's just D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Then you've got G Mixolydian, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I guess your job 
is to connect up any chord that you play in a satisfying melodic way. And that's the name of the game here. And the way to do that is just to listen and transcribe, preferably by ear, as many bass lines in as many different styles and genres as you can and try to get under the skin of it, under the bonnet of it. What is going on there? A lot of the time you'll, you'll see it's these modes, uh, arpeggios, triads, things like that. And really, this is being analytical about it, but you'll like bass lines because of certain reasons. You know, it could be it could be the tone of a bass. You know, I'm using a, a, a Stingray 5 here, which is a... I love the sound of this bass. I can play a few notes on this and, and I still like the sound. You know, I can be very sparse with things. It might be that you like that a bass line is really melodic. Now, I bought this bass because I love Tony Levin's playing, and he does you know, all kinds of... A little melodic ideas like that, and I'm just going up the notes of the of the mode. The first three notes of that mode there. So think about bass lines like that. What do you like about a bass line? And then you could just transfer that idea to, to other you know, bass lines you make up or jam sessions or anything you improvise. Next we have an E minor 7 to an F major 7 chord progression. You can see here that that's the 3 to the 4 in this. That's, that's the function of these chords, 3 to the 4. And that's important to know because the 3 chord is this Phrygian mode. And E Phrygian is just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And the F, F to F, F Lydian, that is... And the E to the F is a minor second, and it gives you this really interesting flavour. It's used a lot in rock and metal and that kind of music because that movement from the E to the F, in this case, that's half step, that minor second, is, is quite a, a dark flavour, and you hear it a lot for that reason. And again, if you were making up a bass line to this, you might want to keep things simple. So there I was just going uh, root E to the octave E and to the minor seventh. And maybe I can just go up to the F and do the same idea, so octaves and this, in this case a major seventh. And there I just ran down the Phrygian mode till I hit the F. So I really am thinking modes here, um, but not thinking too much because I've been practicing these so much that it's just under my fingers. But but I, I use these all the time in terms of you know recording sessions and I'm making something up because you'll hear this. Okay, this one is in a in a metal. Um, the the backing track is in a metal style. But you can have this in, in a pop style or the function of the chord will still be the same. And that, that's the important point. Your ear will catch hold of this as well. So it doesn't matter what style you do, these chord, any of these chord progressions in, it will still work. One of the most important chord progressions you'll hear is the 2-5-1 in jazz. And there's a minor version and a major version. So let's go through the major version first. So in the key of C, your 2 is D minor 7, your 5 is G7, and your 1 is C major 7. Now so far we've had a variety of different styles, and this is the first one that's jazz. So there are a few conventions that you stick to in, in any 
in any form of music, in any style of music. And in jazz, we're doing a walking bass line in this particular example. So it is useful to know your, your modes, although you're not going to play them just up and down like a scale. As I mentioned before, you're using arpeggios a lot. You, arpeggios and scales in combination and, and other techniques like chromatic movement up to different chords. You've got all these different devices that you use, and ultimately you know a few of them well. The idea is to, to link up any chord in a satisfying, pleasing sounding way. So let's just have a few ideas here. So we've got D Dorian. Uh, then we have G Mixlydian. Now that did sound a little bit like I was playing scales up and down because I was, but just in terms of practice, no problem doing that. Just get used to the, the, the modes and, and the shapes that you have under your fingers. Then you can start to connect up like you might do arpeggios and chromatic movement into the next. That I'm just playing a D, I'm just walking up to the G. And all of this comes from C major or C Ionian if you want to give it its modal name. There, I literally was just walking down the scale, hitting the chord each time. So that's a good backing track to play to. You can work on all of these ideas for your walking lines. So now let's move on to a minor 251. Now here something slightly odd goes on. The two in this case is a B minor seven flat five. And this is the weird bit. The five is an E seven. Now if you can see here, we're, we're used to the, the three chord or, or whatever the E chord is in, in the key of C to be an E minor seven. We had that before, didn't we? When we, when we had three chord, we did that Phrygian movement. But here it's an E seven. So what's going on here? Well, very briefly, Two five one. Now the five chord is is its job is to want you your ear to hear a resolution back to the one, and an E seven chord is much better at doing that than an E minor seven chord. It's all to do with the major third that you have from the root note. So we actually have different minor scales, and we have an Aeolian mode, as we have in all these examples here. We've got melodic minor and a harmonic minor. And this is just a really common thing to do. It's just to basically nick, steal the, the five chord from the harmonic minor, stick it into this progression, and hey presto, you've got an E7 chord. Now, that means that we don't have that E Phrygian that we were used to having in this key. If you really wanted to play the mode from, from what we have here is we have the harmonic minor, A harmonic minor, the fifth mode of that is, is a Phrygian dominant, which by the way is a really great one. Really flamenco sounding mode that, that's used all the time in flamenco music, but it's also used over the five chord in minor two five ones. So again, you're not really always gonna be playing um, linear scales over chords but if you did want to, to use notes, you'd have the Phrygian dominant. Let me just quickly show you that. That would be uh, E, F, G sharp. It's, it's exactly the same as a Phrygian mode, which is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, except your G is sharpened. That's the only difference. Phrygian dominant, it creates a dominant chord. Now, when you're doing jazz walking bass lines, a lot of the time you will be playing arpeggios. So remember that you know, this lesson is about modes, but absolutely you need to know your arpeggio that is linked and associated with your mode. So over B minor seven flat five, you've got your Locrian mode and your B minor seven flat five arpeggio. It's also called half diminished. It's got a really odd kind of flavour on its own, but it fits to those chords that the piano player and the guitarist are playing. So 
that flat five is the strange sounding one that leads really nicely to the E7 though. And that was just that Phrygian dominant mode. Again, that might be too busy. Uh, when I was doing the example, I was doing a lot of arpeggios. But it is very helpful to think of the mode and the arpeggio as, as pretty much the same thing. They're just a collection of notes. So that's minus two five ones. We'll move on to a classic 12 bar blues now. We're gonna change key. We're gonna to go to just do blues in B flat. So the mode of choice here is your Mixolydian mode. Now I mentioned before that a handful of modes come up a lot. That Locrian mode is used in those two five ones, the minor two five ones, but you don't really hear it elsewhere that much. But Mixolydian modes, you really hear them a lot in, in blues and funk and jazz. And I'll show you what I mean. So we've got the sixth fret of the E string is B flat. Now, you know, when I was starting, I just used to think, okay, a mixolydian looks exactly the same as a major, just with a flattened seventh. So I knew a major scale, and hopefully you do too. Get that seventh note, put it down a fret, and you've got a you've got a mixolydian, and that is used in blue to get. R&B, soul, all that kind of stuff uses that flavour, that sound, an awful lot. And what happens here in a blues is that all the chords are dominant. This is a really Texas shuffle type type of blues we've got. There are loads of different blues, the jazz blues, but for this example, every single chord that you have, you can do a mixolydian mode over that. This is important. I mentioned before that just because a mode exists over a certain chord doesn't mean you have to pack your bass playing with all of those notes. I mean, in most cases, that would be completely inappropriate to do that. It's just, this gives you choices, and, and that, I think, is the thing that would be really, really good for you to realize. So, you know, B flat, blues, I might do so. I'm gonna use that pattern. So I'm going root, major third, fifth. That's the major sixth. And then right next door to that is the, the flat seventh really outlines the harmony of this of that B flat 7 chord and this mixolydian mode and I'm just using that but sometimes you can you can walk just going down the mixolydian scale from the B flat and if you got if you hitting the E flat chord it's right in the middle of that there's the E flat Don't forget chromatic notes. I'm using chromatic notes to lead into chords. You can go from, from above to below or the other direction. That's a really classic thing to do. This time I'm sliding across to hit that dominant seventh. So mixolydian mode is used all the time in blues. Now let's move on to the last one. This one is there's a few terms for this, but modal interchange is one where you've just got no real relation to one key, but you've just got modes that are taken in isolation and just whacked together. And that's what I did with this backing track here. So we'll analyze this one a little more carefully. So we've got two bars of C major seven. So you could say, oh, well, that's, that's the one chord, isn't it, in C major? And you're right, it is. But when you get modes in isolation, when you get major seventh chords, so you've got two C major sevenths there and two A major seventh chords. Now suddenly that doesn't make any sense because we would expect it to be an A minor seven chord if we're in the key of C. But for this backing track here, I just got a few modes and whacked them together. There's a song, Significant Other by Stephen Wilson. Listen to that. That that does this a similar thing to this, as does 
uh, Havana uh, weather report. Jacko does an amazing solo over that, and that that uses major seventh chords with no real relationship to one key. And this is what I'm. This is this modal interchange thing. So actually, this C major seventh chord isn't the one chord. I'm, I'm treating it as C Lydian. So the the general rule for this backing track is. Whenever you see a major seventh, you're going to use a Lydian mode, and whenever you see a minor seventh, you're going to use a Dorian mode. These are two really, really common modes. And as a soloist, as a composer, you have loads and loads of options, but you will hear the Lydian and this Dorian a lot in music. If you listen to So What by Miles Davis, that's a load of D minor seven and then a load of E flat minor seven. And over the D, you can play D Dorian and then E flat, E flat Dorian. It just got this really cool kind of flavor to it. So if you listen to the drums there, you can follow just the root notes. Follow the kick drum and follow the root note. But if you want to do things like that, this is where you need to know the mode and the arpeggio. I didn't actually do anything in terms of a mode there. I just did a little slide up to the octave. Major seventh and then little run up. That note there. So where am I? I'm on the seventh fret of the G. That's the sharp four. That's the note that gives it the Lydian quality. And I like I really like that sound, so I'm highlighting it. Same thing there, but just over the C. Same pattern. And then when I go to the B flat. I did exactly the same pattern there. This doesn't sound like a top 40 pop song. You're not really going to hear this kind of music in pop. And that's a really, really main point in all of this, is that if you listen to lots of different types of music, you will hear modes that play in slightly different ways, but they're still there. They're, they're there in everything you hear. If you are just like pop music, you're going to hear... The, the natural minor scale, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode, and the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode, you'll hear those two modes and really common chord progressions based around those most of the time. You really, really will. And lots of like basic rock, you'll hear that. But in terms of you know, progressive rock or jazz styles, you're going to hear a lot more of these modes happening. You know, certain types of world music, you'll hear it happening a lot. Flamenco, as I mentioned before, with that Phrygian dominant. So... Modes in context is really, really important. If you're a musician like me who likes to listen to loads of different music, who, I mean, I earn a living playing lots of different types of music, this definitely helps. It really will open up so many doors to you for your playing, for your jamming, improvising, but for your ears as well, this would be absolutely fantastic because you've got all kinds of different intervals going on. Minor second in that Phrygian, you've got the minor second with the major third in the Phrygian dominant, you know. And don't worry too much about these crazy names. You you don't need to know the names so much, but I think it does help. I know them because, because I've been doing it just for so long. I remember being extremely confused by them at the beginning. But what I would recommend you do is I'll put links to a few other videos I've done on modes, but just learn that your modes in the C major scale are, you know, C Dorian, uh, C Ionian, D Dorian, etc. Just learn that. Learn how to play them. Absolutely make sure you master the, the underlying chord, triad and arpeggio there. And use these backing tracks. Don't forget you can download them for free at onlinebasecourses.com. Put a link. And, and use these just to experiment and to use the different patterns and the different sounds and really try and get those under your fingers. So if you have any questions whatsoever about that, leave a comment in the box below and make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification for when I've got, I've got what weekly bass lessons now. I'm doing at least one a week. Sometimes I do more and I've got loads of cool blog posts and things. 
that will have video lessons on them. So subscribe and hopefully I'll see you on the next video next week. Cheers.